real quick before we carry on to uh, if Bill Watts would have stayed and I know like the structure of WCW changed and everything like that. How do you think you would have done under his watch? Was he a big advocate for you? Like, in in the company as like a high guy like moving up in the card and stuff like that or do you think well i i i don't know like i said because i was such a, a green inexperienced young kid at the time mm-hmm. you know um like i'm just turning um 22 while i'm there just at the same time, you know, in December of 92, when they're hiring me. And um, I can't tell you exactly what he thought of me. I do know he wasn't into high flyers and he banned the use of the top rope while I was there. But he let me do my split leg and moonsault because he said, I'm just bouncing off of it. He said, that's different than climbing up and jumping off of it. So I was like, okay, just like always, I'm an exception to the rules. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it could have very well have been just like the job that I got. It could have been obligation to Ron Slinker. They went way back. I don't know if he owed Ron or if it was just a good relationship. No idea, but it could have been something like that. Could have been why I was getting um, a big push. Or maybe he thought that I was really talented. Either way, um, I started with my... Um, underdog challenge match with Pat Rose. And then um, I never lost a match until right before I left for Japan. And that might have been, Oli was probably, I don't know exactly which day they did the switch, but the the night before, I, um, I, my last night in WCW before my first tour of all Japan, I was in the um, tournament. I believe it was a TV title tournament uh, against uh, Vinny Vegas. Oh, as we know, Kevin Nash did the job for uh, Vinny Vegas. He hit the dice, the dice uh, snake eyes. Know, snake eyes, yep. Snake eyes. Oh, yeah. and Vader, Vader was trying to help us during the match. Vader liked me. That yeah. was cool. I found out then, but uh, we were both green. Nash was green too, mm-hmm. and um, he was just Vader was saying uh, before the match, saying, you know. You got to sell like a big guy. You know, you're out there, a big guy. You can't be bumping around and shit, obviously. And he's like, but you, you you should be hitting him with everything you got. You should be like, kick him, go hit the ropes, come up with a flying kick, go hit the ropes, come back with a, a different kick, a, a spin kick, a flip kick, go hit the ropes. And that's exactly what I did. If you watch the match, you know, Vader was like, I hit the ropes, Lake Larry, boom, get off my ass, hit the ropes again, drop kick, hit the, you know, and then uh, and eventually – like he rock, rocked them, rocked them, and then whatever. But that was like uh, a story that, that Vader was teaching me to tell that was uh, very important. I would use that wrestling the big show years later, you know, and uh, work, work on his knee, you know, bam, bam, and uh, eventually get him down to one knee so I can fight him when we're both the same size. Yeah, I, I <laughs> love – that's my favorite kind of dynamic in wrestling is like David versus Goliath matches are like my favorite kind of thing there tune into and it's pretty awesome and vader it's cool too because like him and bam bam bigelow are so synonymous with one another with their work in japan and stuff like that and then you have that memorable match with bam bam yeah 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 and i never worked with vader i forgot about this if someone asked me i don't know if this would have come up to my mind if i wasn't thinking about match with uh vinnie vegas but um because i didn't even remember even talking to vader that much and knowing him that much but shit yeah, he was there uh, back then and uh, and helped me out uh, yeah. in that in that particular moment. One other story uh, down in the Panhandle, uh, Pensacola, uh, coming down from um, well, anyway, it doesn't really matter where it was. I'm in there with um, this other green dude. We're both green. It was the Pensacola because we were smoking on the way down. And Bill Dundee was the agent. And he was like, oh, geez, kid, you better be able to handle yourself in the ring. Uh, I was smoking, but Two Cold Scorpio was driving, and he was smoking. He was driving, rolling joints, and smoking them. <laughs> and I was like, wow, we, you're cool to smoke? He was like, and, and, and Scorpio said, well, Bill knows I can handle myself after I smoke. 
And then Bill's looking at me like, oh, don't be fucked up, kid. You'll get me in trouble. And I was like, no, cool. And I got out my little pipe because I used to smoke out of a pipe at the time. And I was smoking. Had the match <clears throat> that day. And during my match, the lights went out dark. And uh, in the middle of the crowd, you know, and the guy that I'm wrestling, you know, grabbed a hold. And uh, fuck, you know, what are we going to do? And uh, whatever we did, it was mostly, you know, hold, bear hug. You know, probably rushed around a little bit. The lights eventually came back on and stuff. Not only did I handle it, but I got props, you know, for being able to keep calm in a, in a situation like that and be able to not um, abort the match. And uh, it wasn't uh, just me, but thank you, Bill Dundee, for that. But it wasn't just me, but also my opponent, who was Mustafa way Whoa. back then, way back in 93. How about that? Oh, man. In 92. Yeah. 92 I, probably because i because i went over <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. no 93 um it's january yeah december january february <clears throat> i went to japan in uh february and it seems like everything changed when i got back and then i left in may I said all right thank you yeah yeah wow guys too you can check back uh too on the old episode uh I think about when we were in Thailand uh, doing Black Mass 2, and we were told that the penalty for marijuana is death. Did that scare us? Fuck no. We were like, cool, let's score. And, uh, and Andrew Bernarski, um, do you know who that is? No, I don't. Uh-uh. Andrew Bernarski is an actor. He, he, he fucked around with wrestling for a little bit. He's been in, like, everything – and he's most known for uh, his football movies, Big Meathead. He played the the big righted out football player in every movie back then, uh, the program, Any Given Sunday, um, oh. and, and was it The Rookie or something with an R, where they where they lay down in the road on that movie? Yeah, um, placement? Is that maybe. Your- he was in all of those, but in any given Sunday, you know, he's like, Rah! he's that guy that he's got his shit. So he goes in the stall, even though someone's already in there. Oh, I know. Yeah. He's like, that's shit. Andy Bernarski. He and I were the only ones that smoked marijuana. We were so thoughtless and careless that um, on the set, even like all the dress, certain sets, certain locations, all the actors had to dress in one trailer, like one trailer. Um, and, uh, we would go in there, we would smoke it out and, and the other actors would be like, do you, do you have to do that in here? And I'd be, it, you know, I would just be like, uh, well, it's, yeah, it's too fucking hot outside, man. And, <laughs> and they're like, you can't, you can't just go outside for a few minutes and smoke. We don't want to smell all that. And I was like, fuck no, man. I need the air conditioner. And, and I really looking back at like, I really didn't give a fuck and, and really didn't even think that all the way through about how inconsiderate that was i was just i didn't give a fuck yeah crazy that is crazy it's uh no it it is like it's everywhere dude now i'm also the double decker bus in uh in ireland the awr would rent and uh there was more of us to smoke there the same thing we would smoke that whole bus up every day you know as soon as we get on the bus we're upstairs and and the smoke's going to make its way everywhere and then there'd be certain guys um, like, um, uh, what's his name? Um, shoot, now I'm stuck on this dude. This guy is uh, Joe, Joey. He's He never wrestled in the States or never made it as a star in the States, but he's very well known on the European UK tour. Joey um, something. He's like an Al Snow kind of looking dude. Oh, mm. Joe, Joe, help me out, fans. Yeah, help me out. He would be like, he would be like, dude, do you do you have to? Can't you smoke before you get on the bus? And I'd be, oh yeah, we did that too. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we got that out of the way. (laughs) Yeah, it's a it helps kill the two hour drive. Well, I know, but then you know, 
then uh, we all have to breathe it and we don't want to smoke it. And I, I, I think the reason I felt like that was because I was like, oh, they just think it's hurting them, but it's not. Like, I really felt like that. Oh, don't worry. It's not like cigarette smoke. There's no carcinogens. There's no poison uh, chemicals whatsoever in, in marijuana smoke. So, it's, you know, don't worry. It's healthy. I think it was that perspective that made me feel like I wasn't doing anything wrong. And now I think about it and it was quite rude. But you always say, too, it's like you learn as you get older, and that helps, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things I noticed. I used to do that all the time and be careless. But, you know, that's uh, that's how, like, I remember before I smoked when Sabu and Judge Dredd would roll the windows up and uh, try and smoke me and Dango out, and we're in the back seat saying, <laughs> open up, it's not funny. You know, they'd be laughing their asses off, <sighs> blowing it at us. Stop it. <laughs> But we did think it was killing us. You no, know? did you really? Yeah. Wow. That's what we were taught. That's what we yeah. were taught.